So I'm Steve Gruber with Threads of Hope. Uh, we are a ministry that works with one poor village in the Philippines called Aninuan. Uh, it's a tourist area. And outside of tourism, there isn't a real opportunity for income. So the families were actually making trinkets and products out, out of thread and sending them with the, with the kids to the beaches to uh, sell to the tourists and have a means of income. Um, it's, it's really dangerous. Um, there's... Uh, there's a very real risk of exploitation uh, in that situation. So uh, what we've been able to do is equip these families uh, to still handcraft products uh, in their homes, um, and in this case using thread, uh, that instead of having them send their kids to the beaches to sell, we bring them here to the States and sell, and then reinvest that uh, money back in the community. Uh, and besides providing uh, 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 income support for these families uh, because our economies are very different uh, we're able to do other things in their community like build a church and a high, sc high school um, provide some medical care um, we even have some kids in college um, so, so all of this uh, is just coming from regular cotton embroidery thread um, and God's blessing so the beginning of Threads of Hope uh, actually came from some friends of ours, uh, Alex and Chris Kulo. Uh, they were working as missionaries, as dorm parents, at a mission uh, school called Faith Academy in Manila. And when they would go on breaks from the school, uh, they started doing some island hopping, which is really easy in the Philippines. There's over 7,000 islands there. Uh, but they started to regularly go back to uh, one particular area, uh, the beach area of Puerto Galera and the island of Mindoro. And over the course of time, they got to know several of the, uh, the kids who were coming up as, as beach vendors. And, and uh, there were several that they got to know uh, very well and uh, one time they had they had went there and one girl was was missing um, and they asked after her and found out that at the age of around 14 and a half or so um, she had decided that she wasn't making enough money selling things on the beach uh, to provide income for her family and gave into the temptation um, uh, to, uh, to to sell herself into prostitution and she was gone right away um, so when Alex had heard this, uh, he asked uh, this uh, missing girl's friend, uh, whose name is Alona, uh, he would asked uh, Alona for $100 worth of the thread bracelets that her family ma made, and that was what Alona sold. Um, and not, uh, not really as a, as a handout, but as a, a means of encour encouragement so that uh, she wouldn't give in to that temptation um, for uh, prostitution. And, and of course, she said, well, I don't have that many bracelets now. So what uh, um, he said, well, don't worry about it. We'll just get them some other time. And not uh, knowing whether to expect, uh, you know, Alona or, uh, you know, see, see bracelets or her family or money again. Um, but it was just a way to, um, to offer help. And when they returned several months later, uh, they, uh, Alona's family found them right away and then gave them 1,200 bracelets, uh, which when they came back to the states they spent six months in the states and six months in the philippines and they had gone to a, a family camp there in uh, in northern wisconsin where we're from and the camp store manager saw the bracelets that they were wearing and they, t they relayed the story of alona and her family uh, to this camp store manager and uh, she asked to to sell the remaining bracelets uh, which she did and uh, provided a check back uh, for a thousand dollars and said go take care of that girl's family. So when they returned back to the, the Philippines then uh, they contacted Alona and gave her the thousand dollars and said uh, you know we'd like a thousand dollars of the bracelets and you know of course her, her eyes got really big and uh, she took, took the money and had it in her heart to t teach uh, her surrounding family and some other families there uh, how to make those thread bracelets and that was able to distribute the money to them as well. And so that $100 started into 1,200 bracelets, into $1,000, and then into 12,000 bracelets. And God started moving Alex and Chris away from being dorm parents and into the Threads of Hope ministry then full time as well. Um, so uh, be besides selling at different events like uh, Resound Fest and, and other music festivals, um, of course you can uh, shop online at uh, threadsofhope.co. 
Uh, but in addition to that, um, we're really at, at heart a fundraising organization. Uh, and most of the money for this, this particular village comes from individuals and groups and, and clubs that will partner with us uh, to use our products uh, for raising money, money for individual um, missions or organizations or, or causes. So we, we've partnered with, with um, cheer squads and, and sports teams and chess clubs and uh, whatever who need to raise money for their particular um, uh, team goal uh, causes in, in communities, domestic violence shelters, um, uh, homeless care, um, even bigger stuff too, like uh, like adoptions. We've been a fundraising partner in 32 adoptions since 2015. Uh, now, we're a missions project. Missions is in our DNA. Most of our fundraising partnerships actually come from uh, individuals and churches uh, who want to use this pr product to raise money for their missions trips. Um, and actually, since 2015, we've been a, a fundraising partner in 1,720 missions trips to 107 countries around the world. So God is literally not only using cotton embroidery thread to care for these fa families, but in the wider sense, he's actually using this cotton embroidery thread and these villagers' poverty to reach the world with the gospel. Um, that's pretty amazing stuff.